there was a bright light, a really bright light, falling through the clouds uh, from above. An absolutely massive, massive object. If you like, I can send you the uh, the image, uh, the high resolution totally. image, and, and, and you can yeah. impose it on on this video. The viewers might. I'll like put it right it. here. So you yeah. had your camera on you, and you took it. Yeah, That's yeah. I took, awesome. I took, I took, I took two pictures of it. Experts have already confirmed that I didn't alter the image. It just as is. In recent years, there's been a lot of shift in terms of credibility to this topic, most specifically in 2017, where three Navy videos were actually released of unidentified flying objects. Shortly after that, the New York Times releasing an article about a potential program that the Pentagon is running specifically for UFOs. Even in recent months, in May of this year, there was a congressional subcommittee that was approached by four individuals who were all very credible individuals sharing their worry about national defense because of these sightings. Three of the four individuals are former military pilots, including a commander in the U.S. Navy, a former F-18 pilot, and a former Air Force intelligence officer who retired with the rank of a major. The fourth speaker was a former Defense Department employee, and the whole goal of the hearing was basically for the Congressional Subcommittee to see and understand if there was a national or international threat. Christian is a 747 Boeing pilot. He's also one of the world's leading aviation photographers, one of the best out there. Christian explains the four sightings that he's had amongst many of what can only be described as potential UFOs. This topic, just like many of the topics I discuss, has a lot of stigma behind it and a lot of potential roadblocks in actually seeing the conversation for what it is. This, just like many other topics that are discussed, is one of those things that may actually have some credibility to it, though the masses tend to say otherwise. So I hope you guys like this video. Let's get into it. All right, Christian. So one of the reasons that I had you on, probably the biggest reason, is that you have a very successful career in flying. And you have, from my understanding, witnessed four what one would call potential UFO sightings. And up until recently, it's been a rather taboo topic. I want to talk to you about what those experience were, experiences were and what you saw. But first, I think it's really important to speak on your career what you have done in your career, you know, what your experience is and kind of start from there. Sure. I'm uh, Christian. I just turned 40 years old. I'm from the Netherlands. I've been flying now for uh, 20 years. For just one year, I flew in general aviation in the Netherlands. And after that, I was hired as a first officer with a, with a small company in the Netherlands. We had contracts all over Europe, uh, but also in Africa where I was flying for local airlines. And we got a military contract for uh, the ISAF in Afghanistan. And I flew uh, from Kabul in 2006-2008. And um, yeah, flying the 737 all over Europe was uh, was a lot of fun. At the age of 27, I was flying the 747 based in Europe, uh, literally in the global network, which brought me to all the corners of the world. I'm flying the 747 for the last 12 years. Um, I was upgraded to captain two years ago uh, at the age of 38. So I consider myself extremely privileged uh, to uh, to have um, climbed the aviation ladder so fast and now I'm flying the 747. It's an icon of aviation and I'm flying it as a captain now. So I'm, I'm, I'm really privileged. And uh, in a nutshell, that's my uh, flying career. It's so fascinating to me because there have been hundreds of pilots who have had experiences. It's, there's such a stigma around it. It comes off in a way that it's, it's people just immediately dismiss it. But you saw what you saw. As we all kind of know, a lot of times what mainstream information is, isn't always necessarily the truth, right? So I think that's a lot of what I like to talk about on here is just kind of, you know, what is the truth, right? What What is actually happening? What is something that's reality that's going on? And so with that said, what I really want to know, let's just cut to it, is what it, what did you see? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Like what what was it? <laughs> what 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 what, what yeah, did you yeah, see yeah, in this guy? Yeah, I like uh, have to know. Um, you know? It, it's it's not always easy to identify exactly what we see. Um, in general, most of the interesting stuff I've seen or the the, the 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 strange things I've seen, I was able to eventually explain. Um, especially uh, some strange lights that I've seen, etc. They, for example, they 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 proved to be a illegal fishing fleet that was uh, somewhere where it wasn't supposed to be. I've seen some uh, rocket launches, even some military uh, ICBM launches, so and the uh, intercontinental inter uh, ballistic missile launches. Uh, but I've also seen four things. No clue what it is, but four things uh, that I still um, and yeah, I, I still have absolutely no clue what it was, and I'm, I have no way of 
of um, um, explaining what I've what I've seen there. And it was only after I saw the interviews with Commander David Traver and later uh, Lieutenant Ryan Graves that they explained uh, basically that as as U.S. Navy pilots, they've been seeing things that they couldn't explain and that they they were really worried about their um, airplane and basically flight safety in general. And it was only after seeing those interviews that I realized that they were talking about some of the things that looked eerily similar to what I've seen as well. The first thing um, that I couldn't explain that I saw from the cockpit was actually during my uh, first flights as a co-pilot. And we were flying at night somewhere over Germany between two cloud layers and the turboprop. Uh, it's, it's, it's not really flying that high, maximum maybe 18, 19,000 feet. And we dimmed all the cockpit lights and all of a sudden, uh, I think it was about maybe two or three miles, uh, just uh, on the 45 degree from our flight path. There was a bright light, a really bright light, falling through the clouds uh, from above and falling uh, vertically down, disappearing in the clouds below. And I remember that my uh, my captain or my instructor at that time, he was really surprised as well. And he, he, um, uh, he asked me if I saw it as well, and I, I confirmed it. Because it was something that I, I never expected to see, you know. And as a pilot, you're used to to, to lightning and, and, and uh, seeing the moon, seeing the stars, etc. But this was a, right. a a ball of light, maybe two or three feet in diameter, and it was just moving, falling vertically down at an extremely high rate of descent. Um, and that was really weird. But I never really really gave it much thought because I I thought you know what I'm I'm just new on the job and I'll probably see this every every week or every two weeks or so. With the with the ball of light, what color light was it? Pure white, pure white. Pure white. Yeah, and it was okay. not pulsating. It was not leaving a trail. It wasn't leaving any smoke. It was just um, pure white. That's that's uh, as 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 uh, yeah as simple as it's uh, as, as it was. Was there sound when you saw it? Well, of course, in the cockpit, there's a lot of noise anyway. I think we have about yeah. 90 decibels already. So we, we are flying always with the headsets on and uh, there's a lot of deafening noise. We don't even hear it when there's uh, uh, thunderstorms uh, um, uh, erupting around us. So if it was making any sounds, we were unable to hear it anyway. Did it show up on your radar or did you just see it with your eyes? Yeah, just only uh, only visible for, uh, for the naked eye. Uh, there was no other traffic around us. We have actually on our navigation display, we can see all the other airplanes around us. It's called uh, TCAS. Uh, all commercial airplanes have it, all military airplanes have it. And it's a way to to visualize for us pilots uh, the location of other airplanes. In this case, uh, there was no uh, traffic on our on our navigation display, no weather mm. whatsoever. Uh, it it's appeared, it fell down, and within one or two seconds it was gone. It was it was it was falling down at an incredible speed. And as I said, you know, the light was pure white. It was not pulsating. It didn't leave a trail. Just absolutely nothing. As I said, you know, I, I, I was pretty new on the job and I thought oh, this was just not something I would probably see every week or two. Um, but actually, it, uh, four years later, I was flying with a Boeing 737 uh, passenger jet from uh, Greece back to Amsterdam in the Netherlands, which is basically diagonally across uh, Europe. And it was a perfectly um, uh, nice summer day, clear skies, no clouds. And we were flying at, I think, 36, 37,000 feet. I was just chatting with my with my captain, and I saw exactly the same thing. It uh, there was a very bright light. In this case, it was during daylight. It was a very bright light, just moving incredibly fast, falling down into the sea. It was a bit further away than the first time I saw it. I guess now it was maybe ten miles away, and the light was just moving vertically. It fell into the sea, and it was gone. And my captain saw it as well. The uh, we have we have absolutely no clue what it was. And since um, it was it was clearly something that was moving in our airspace and even relatively close to our flight path, I asked the air traffic controller if there was any military traffic going on because um, sometimes there are some military exercises and they're shooting some missiles or rockets and normally we, we are aware of those exercises. But if they start shooting missiles or rockets um, uh, without even telling us, that could be a potential violation of, of flight safety. But the controller basically, he, he reacted really annoyed. He said, no, no, there's no military activity, um, whatever, don't bother me, and just contact the next guy. And that made us realize that there was, there was nothing military going on, at least not something publicly known. And it was the same kind of light I saw uh, in 2005. So it, 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 four years before, I saw exactly the kind of strange moving light, and that was really weird. And I still have absolutely no explanation what that what it could have been. So. And and it's this like ball, like you said, it's a sphere basically that's going 
flying down real exceptionally fast like could could you fly that fast let's say no no definitely not and it was um it was coming into view from the top side of the window frame and it was let's say if we are flying at 36000 feet the object would have probably been visible the moment it was passing 50000 feet 50 50000 feet and within i think one and a half or two seconds it was down in the ocean it was just so it got into the ocean yeah it was or the sea the adriatic sea it just fell into the sea uh, and I, I guess it was about maybe maybe 10 15 miles away it is it's difficult to judge the distances if you don't know how big the object is of course uh, but there was no splash visible so uh, we didn't see it um, a splash into the ocean with a lot of uh, foam and, and, and water uh, coming out. It just disappeared and that, that was the end of it. So whatever it was, it was moving. When it came into view, it was probably flying at or moving at 50, 60,000 feet. And it within within one and a half or two seconds, it was down on the, on the surface. So whatever it was, it must have been moving incredibly fast. And it was going vertically down and it was not in an angle. As you would expect, maybe with uh, with space debris or, or or anything else falling down from the sky, it was just moving vertically down, and that was it. So um, now, after twenty years of flying, I've seen those two falling lights or objects. I don't even know if they're objects or just moving balls of light. And also, I think it's good to know uh, because a lot of pilots, or let's say a lot of uh, people, hear my story. They say, "Ah, oh, but it could be a ball lightning. It could be something uh, coming from a thunderstorm." Well, in this case, um, we were flying in a perfectly blue skies uh, environment. There was just no clouds whatsoever. We had perfect visibility. We could see half of Europe. And it was just strange. There was absolutely nothing in my eyes that could have uh, created this static discharge or lightning strike, absolutely nothing. So I'm still clueless about what uh, that could have been. So so when now, correct me, I was thinking this was nighttime. Is this daytime? For both? I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the the second time with the seven three seven, that was it was during day. So it was just afternoon and blue skies. It was just um, strange. It was really. And you could still see the light that bright. Oh, definitely. It was it was so bright. It immediately caught our attention. As as as, as pilots, we're really trained to um, to constantly look outside because we want to identify what it is. Because because basically, it could be a threat for our airplane. This is. An, this this is not something that we see normally. It it couldn't have been a normal airplane. It wasn't a balloon. It was nothing weather related. So it it leaves you completely baffled. It, it leaves you just without without realizing what you've actually seen. What what did you see the other two times following those two kind of like sphere experiences? What were the rest? Sure. Sure. Uh, be, be, before I continue with the other ones, I think a lot of people, they see uh, things in the sky. They see even even anomalous stuff that they cannot explain on the ground. Um, and many of these anecdotes are very interesting. But for me as a pilot uh, or, or, or some, um, let's say, police officers, we're so-called uh, credible trained observers. That means, you know, and as part of my job, I'm looking out of the window and I try to identify what I'm seeing. I'm not out there trying to find anomalous stuff. I'm not out there to find things that I cannot explain. Uh, I'm just out there to fly my airplane, and that's the only only priority I have. So, as a as a, as a credible observer, uh, once a pilot is coming forward with his sightings, or he he says he cannot explain something, it's really worth listening to those accounts. And it's not because I'm a I'm a pilot that I'm uh, uh, maybe more interesting in the discussion. I think if it comes from a credible observer. That like a police officer who's who's doing his job and who's always uh, vigilant, uh, military personnel, but as I said, also pilots. Um, we in our profession cannot explain what it is, and uh, um, it might pose a threat for us for 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 the airplane. So um, the few times that we're really left clueless, I think that's uh, that's worth uh, taking serious. If it's not being reported, we're going in blind, um, essentially, and so that does threaten you. That threatens. The, the other in the cockpit that flattens the entire plane that threatens everybody else that's you know in that vicinity so with the other three two excuse me sightings that you saw were they similar to these first two with the kind of spheres that fell or different no completely different um the uh, the third thing was actually a very interesting one uh, it was also from the Fokker 50 i think it was 2006 or 2005 uh, it was also over greece um and we saw a light it was in the middle of the night by the way there was no moon we could see all the stars it was it was, it was a clear starry night no clouds and all of a sudden we saw a light a really bright light appearing um, in the sky ahead of us. It was as bright 
as uh, sometimes planet Venus. Have you ever seen the uh, planet Venus or, or other planets in? The... I have not up close, but I have. Right, <laughs> it's very bright. That's why you can see it because it's just so bright. Uh, exactly, exactly. And it looked like it was, let's say, planet Venus, uh, and it was appearing suddenly. It disappeared. It reappeared a little bit towards the east again, and it did this about four times. So it made like a stuttering movement. It appeared, disappeared, reappeared four times. And all of a sudden, it just shut off after the fourth time. It shut off uh, into space or whatever, in, into the far distance with absolutely incredible speed. And um, I've, I've never seen anything like that before. And it didn't even accelerate. It was just instant speed. It was just instant, like a, a, a bullet a bullet from a rifle. It was just it was wow. instantaneous speed. And um, I have no clue how big it was because it's very difficult to judge um, how high it was, how far it was. But I'm pretty sure it was very high. I'm not sure if it's at 20,000 feet or 30,000 feet or maybe even a space. Could have been as well. Uh, but I was pretty sure, uh, both of us, we were pretty sure that it was not uh, very close to our airplane. It was really, up, really high up in the atmosphere. And uh, looking at the at the strange erratic behavior and then the instant speed it was having, it was it was like nothing I've ever seen. Um, for a long time, I dismissed this as uh, something military uh, because actually that same night, uh, a U.S. carrier group was passing by in the Mediterranean, just south of Greece, uh, with the USS Theodore Roosevelt, uh, which is a nuclear-powered uh, aircraft carrier. And um, this was for me and my my colleague the reason to basically assume that it was something military, that there's some high tech toys being used to uh, brush it off. Uh, yeah, like maybe that. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And interestingly enough, um, I realized that a lot of these same lights have been reported uh, by military personnel, both sailors and pilots, uh, often in the vicinity of of nuclear facilities and also uh, the USS Theodore Roosevelt in particular. And when I read that, I realized that this sighting I had in, back in 2005 was maybe not uh, military related, but it might have been something uh, truly anomalous. So, and it could not have been a shooting star. No, <laughs> no, it, that's, that's actually <laughs> uh, it's 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 a very valid question. Uh, I must say I've seen uh, thousands and thousands of shooting stars or meteors. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to make any wishes anymore because I've seen so many in my career. <laughs> but uh, shooting stars, basically, they always make the same um, a trajectory and they always have the same speed, pretty much always uh, the same speed. And they, they, they fall down in an, uh, in an angle, they burn up, and uh, they're, they're gone within maybe uh, a fraction of a second or a second, sometimes a bit longer if they're really big. Um, but, but they never start to accelerate again or they never start to, to appear or reappear. So um, it it was uh, it was definitely not not a shooting star. Okay, yeah, had to ask. I'm sure you probably considered if it was a shooting star. Sure. <laughs> um, and and onto the fourth one. This one was different than the others. Right? Yeah, sure, sure. Because uh, the first three were actually just um, light points or balls of light. In this case, the fourth one, which is actually maybe even the most interesting one. Uh, we were flying from a seven, with a 737 from Amsterdam to Malaga in the south of Spain. Uh, it was already um, uh, after sunset, so the whole sky was, was turning orange and yellow. And we fly into, into Spain. We just crossed the Pyrenees Mountains, and uh, we have about uh, one hour of flight left before we land in Malaga. And all of a sudden, my, my, my captain, my colleague, uh, his old military uh, pilot, he's asking me, well, hey, Chris, do you see that as well? And I, I don't know, I was probably reading my newspaper or doing something else. So I put it away and I started looking out of my window. And indeed, I saw something just flying, flying uh, very far ahead of us. But it was a really, really strange thing that we saw. So for uh, about 10 minutes, we were just looking at it. And to give you an idea, it was about uh, the shape of a, of a grain of rice. And it was about the size of the grain of rice if you, if you stretch your arm out uh, completely. So it was just a really, really small... Um, elongated object and it was uh, dark and normally I, I would just dismiss it and think you know it's just a, probably another airplane but in this case we were flying at uh, 41,000 feet which is which is very high there's not much other traffic uh, higher than us this object was clearly flying much higher than we were flying and on top of that we were flying on a direct route from uh, the position that we flew into uh, Spain direct to the airport of Malaga so that means we didn't follow any airways or, or normal normal routes. So whatever it was, it was flying exactly the same route, which was strange because there was no other traffic there. 
and it was flying extremely high, much higher than any normal commercial traffic. So as I said, for about 10 minutes, we were just looking at it and we were just trying to find out what kind of airplane that could have been because it didn't have any tails, it didn't have any engines. Um, and normally when you when you look into the back of a, of a contrail, you know, these, these big curly contrails that come from airplanes, sometimes when you look exactly um, in, in, in the back of another contrail, especially uh, after sunset, you see it change a bit. Sometimes it's, it's, it, it can be anomalous, but after two or three minutes you see it dissipating, you see it moving, and it becomes curly and it, it disappears completely. But in this case, it was just a solid shape that didn't move, that didn't, didn't change uh, a position or, or whatever. So about after 10 minutes, I just decided to ask the air traffic controller what kind of airplane it was, because we were just clueless what kind of strange thing that could have been. And the air traffic controller, he replied immediately. He was very surprised. He said, well, uh, to my knowledge, there's absolutely no traffic. There. There's just nothing ahead of you guys uh, for the entire continent oh, wow. of, of Europe. So what are you guys seeing? So, of course, I replied to him, say, well, we see an object. Uh, difficult to say how far away it is, but it seems like a, a huge airplane depending of course on how far away it is and it seems to be flying at least at 60,000 feet or something which is some I, I, I doubt any commercial airplanes can can reach that altitude and even even uh, uh, only a handful of military airplanes could could reach that, that high so yeah uh, this guy was also completely clueless and after two minutes he came back to me over the radio the air traffic controller and he asked me to actually call the military air traffic controller uh, of Spain at least in that sector, because they were very interested in what we saw. So I tuned in a different frequency on the radio, and I called this military air traffic controller. And this guy, he took it very serious. He wanted to know all the details of what we've seen. And he calls also confirmed to us there was no other known traffic uh, over the entire um, um, uh, Iberian Peninsula. So there was no traffic over Spain whatsoever. He also said there is no military activity. There are no weather balloons. There's just absolutely nothing in the sky ahead of you guys. And while he's saying this, you're seeing it? Yeah, we saw it for over an hour. We came up with a theory that either it was another airplane that was just, um, um, how do you say this? Uh, so fl flying ahead of us with the exact same speed, constantly in the same track, because it didn't yeah. change shape for over an hour. It, it kept the same size. So, so it was either uh, flying ahead of us, which is kind of strange, uh, or it must have been an absolutely massive, massive object that was stationary, but extremely far away. Like, that, yeah, because then you couldn't tell if it was getting, if it was small or what, because it was just far, far ex away. Exactly, exactly. What, was it lit up like the other ones were, or was it just... Yeah, it was basically uh, backlit, so we could see the shadow side of it. Uh, if you like, I can send you the uh, the image, uh, the high-resolution oh, image, and you, and you, and you can yeah. impose it on, on this video, the viewers might... I'll put it right here so that we can all see it, you know, what this looks like, because I think that's really important. You have a picture of it, so, like, you've yeah. had your camera on you, and you took it. Yeah, yeah, I took, I took, I took two pictures of it, and they're actually being analyzed uh, right now as well. It's, it, it's, it's a raw image. It comes straight from the camera. You can even see, and some experts have already confirmed that I didn't alter the image. It just as is. It's mostly the factors around it that that make it such a such a strange case. Um, oh. The altitude was extremely high. It was not on any airway. It was not on a, on, a, on a commercial route. We saw it for over an hour, and it must have been uh, yeah, massive, probably Re really big, really big. So yeah, that's that's the fourth one, and that's uh, completely different than the other cases that I've seen. Um, but it's still an anomalous. So I really, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to hear the answer about what we've what we've actually seen there. And so, did you ever find? Have you ever found anybody that's ever come forward and said, "Yes, on this date at this time, I also saw this." That you know wasn't like the those that were on the radio or your co-pilot or anybody else. Was there anybody? No. Nope. Anything yet? No, no. Uh, we, uh, the the reason that we got this direct routing direct to the airport was basically because we were the only ones flying over Spain uh, that day. So um, there was no. You were, and that was was that a, sorry really quick was that a known thing that y'all were the only ones flying over? Like was that a coordinated thing? Well, it is, sometimes it happens when the uh, when the airspace is really quiet and we enter this. Uh, in this case, we entered Spanish airspace. And the controller, he says, you know, there's no other traffic. You are cleared to direct to Malaga. It saves us some time. It, it saves us some fuel and everyone is happy. Yeah. So if, 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 it, if it's not busy, we easily get those uh, direct routings, etc. I have been approached um, by my own colleagues, a lot of my own colleagues, uh, and also anonymously by people, um, commercial pilots through my website, who've shared with me their own experiences. And they're, uh, they're intriguing. And a lot of pilots, they're still 
very hesitant to come forward with their sightings and with their experiences because the, the, the stigma is just so strong and a lot of pilots are very afraid of, of, of uh, losing their credibility. Um, but one of my um, best friends even came forward to me recently with what he'd seen uh, a couple of years ago. And I cannot go into details because I'm, I'm not sure if he, if he allows me to share it. But he even showed me pictures of, of the object that was basically uh, flying next to them at night. It was a, a glowing object. And it was just absolutely amazing. And this is something completely different than what I've experienced myself. In this case, it was an object that was relatively close to his airplane. As I said, you know, he, he sent me about 10 pictures of the object as well. And he was baffled. And in his case, um, he made a report to air traffic control as well. He was asking if there was any military airplane just trying to, to, to intercept him. And apparently about four or five other airplanes saw it as well. It was in the middle of the night. So whatever it was, it was, it was glowing, it was illuminated. And a lot of pilots uh, reported the same thing. They saw it as well. So um, the same thing here, you know, he's seen something, but he's so afraid of actually sharing it because uh, the stigma around the, the subject is just too big. So for me, this is just more confirmation that a lot of pilots, a lot of credible pilots are, are seeing things uh, that go um, unreported because we're just too afraid of it. And and I think it's it's also very important that we get rid of this idea that we're seeing uh, a little green man or anything extraterrestrial. Um, whatever it is, it's, pr it's probably a mixed bag of, of, of uh, um, um, explanations for it. And, you know, I don't care. If someone can explain to me or even prove to me that what I've seen is just a meteor or, or maybe a strange weather phenomena or, or whatever... I'm absolutely happy to accept that because uh, I don't really care about what it is. I just want to know if it's posing a threat to my airplane. Uh, 